and welcome back. Let's continue on with relative positioning. Okay, I want to show you something else you can do um, that's uh, something you'll probably want to do with your layout quite often, and that's center something on a page. Okay, we've not discussed how to do that. I will say in advance, this is a little tricky. Um, the floats kind of are a little weird in themselves. Once you get the hang of it, they're pretty easy. But this is one that's really non-obvious. Okay, I'm going to explain how to do it. What I've got is I've got a page of just basic text here. And this could be anything. It could be a whole layout. In my case, it's just one, one layer. I took out the image from the, from the last podcast here. And uh, what I have is I'm left with five paragraphs of text. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to give this div, I want to make this kind of narrow and I want to center it up on the page. Okay. Well, the first thing I'll do, let's go over to the HTML. And I've got uh, the style tag up here in the header. I'm going to put some styles in here. So what I'm going to say, first of all, remember our div and from the last example has an ID down here of the text. So this is the div I want to affect. So let's go in here and let's say div pound the text. Remember the pound symbol indicates it's an ID and not a class. Okay. So what that says, I could also just have pound the text, but this specifically is telling the browser it's a div with an ID of the text. Okay. Let's go in here, put our curly braces. And what I'm going to do first is let's give this a width of 300 pixels. Oh, 300, sorry, 300 px. Okay. Let's go back over to the HTML and now as you can see, what it does is it gave it a width. Now it's 300 pixels wide that it's putting all this text in, but by default, it throws it over and aligns it on the left side of the page. And let's say I don't want this. I want it to actually be on the center of the page. Okay. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here now, and we're going to do the centering by using the margin attributes. So I'm gonna type margin, colon. Okay, now you remember from margin, if I just put one, uh, uh, numeric value in here, like 60 pixels, it's going to give me a margin of 60 pixels all the way around that, that div, right? Okay. And if I feed it two numbers, if I say 60 pixels, 20 pixels, remember that this now, and this is review from an earlier uh, podcast here, but, but now it tells me that I'm giving it two numbers, which means the first one is the top and bottom, the second one is the left and the right. So on the top and bottom, you'll have 60 pixels, and on the left and right, you'll have 20 pixels. And if I give it four numbers in here, 30 pixels, and let's say 17, we'll give it an odd number of pixels. What this says is it says each side is going to get a different uh, margin value, okay? And it starts, <clears throat> it starts at the top. It's just like a clock. It starts at 12 o'clock and goes clockwise. So here's the top will be 60 pixels. The right, because we're going clockwise, will be 20 pixels. The bottom will be 30 pixels. And finally, the left will be 17 pixels. So that's what happens. I have three options here. I can give it one numeric value, and it will give me one consistent um, uh, value on each side, or if I give it two, it divides it between top, bottom, left, and right. And if I give it four, it separates the top, bottom, left, and right all out into their each own individual number, numeric value, okay? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to use specifically the left and the right, okay? The top and the bottom I'm going to set to zero. So the left and the right, remember we're centering an item now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say auto, A-U-T-O and give it an, a, a semicolon. Now, automatic basically tells it to do the math and center it up. So let's go back over here and look at what that looks like. And voila, there we have centered on the page. It is a <clears throat> one 300 pixel wide div and the margin on the left and the right are set to auto. I can also do this, come back over here for a second. I can also specifically say margin left, whoops, margin dash left colon auto semicolon. And then I can say margin right uh, semicolon auto, and it will do the same thing. See, there's no change, but it's just more to type. So I tend to shortcut this by doing the, uh, the margin attribute and then feeding it to two numeric values. I'll go ahead and zero out the top and the bottom and say auto on the left and the right. See, here we're in the same thing. Now, maybe I want to let the top and the bottom breathe a little bit. What I can do is change this value to, let's say 100 pixels. Remember, you have to give it a PX. You can't just say 100. Go back over here, and now you see that I have a uh, margin up here of 100 pixels, and also, oops, the bottom down here of 100 pixels. And the left and the right are set to auto, and so it will center it up. Okay, hope that makes sense, and we'll move on to another example of kind of tying all this stuff together.